What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? How are y'all doing today? Today is officially Thursday, and it is my official podcast day. This video will not, I'm sorry, this podcast will not be long today. Um, I am on a break from work, but I just wanted to go ahead and, and record my video for this um, Thursday's episode. It will be posted by 8 p.m. Okay, so today's topic is, um, hold on one second. Let me pull up my information. How's everybody doing? I pray everybody's doing well. Uh, we are into um, a new year. I hope everybody is being blessed and staying safe. With that coronavirus out here, you, you really got to be careful. All right. So today, y'all, the information that I am talking about is how to rekindle a marriage. And this is according to experts. Now, this was published by Kimberly Don Newman, and it was published February 27, 2019. As always... I will provide the information that she wrote and then I'll give my response to what she said and it's based on my experiences, okay? All right, so so she said many people think that marriage is about marrying the right person. So when things go wrong, they automatically go to the crap. I accidentally married the wrong person place. And this is said by Elisa Bowman. She is the author of Project Happily Ever After. And she also says, although you don't want to marry someone you are basically compatible with, I'm sorry, she said, although you do want to marry someone you are basically compatible with, marriage has a lot less to do with marrying the right person than it has to do with doing the right things with the person you are married to. In other words, relationships are a constant work in progress. And I can 100% agree with her um, on that. It's not about, you know, being 100% compatible with your mate. It's all about doing the right thing to keep the relationship strong and keep that bond where it's unbreakable. I mean, and that's just my personal opinion to what she said. Now, the first thing she said... Um, there are ways, 14 ways, excuse me, she didn't say 14. She said, to maintain the happy and loving connection that made you say I do in the first place. Oh, it do say try out these 14 expert, expert tips to rekindle a marriage. Number one, resist entering into a critical mindset. Okay, she said with that, there may be a time when your partner did something that hurt you and never apologized for it. Maybe they even continue to do the same thing over and over again, despite you letting them know that it bothers you. This can cause you to develop a bitterness towards them. And that's according to neuropsychologist and life coach, Sydney Ceruto. She do have a PhD. And she also says at some point, any person in a marriage may find themselves observing their partner through a critical lens. Now, I can definitely agree with that. Because I know from experience, everything I say is based on my experience or personal um, 
encounter. So that is a true statement, what she said. If someone do something to me, right, and we are in a relationship, and I go to them and I say, hey, um, I don't like what you did X, Y, and Z. Um, if you don't mind, can you please not do it again? And the person just totally disregard my request. They don't apologize for what, for what they did. And then they continue to do the same thing or similar things to what I asked them not to do. Um, I can become very critical um, of them and my mindset towards them will be negative. And that, that's a known fact. All right. Number two, treat your spouse with kindness. Now, I get that. I don't even have to read what she said on treat your spouse with kindness. Because we all know that if we take the more loving action, as she stated, it makes you feel more in love. Okay, but sometimes... When you are the only person treating the the other spouse with love and then everything they say towards you is harsh and um, the tone of voice is just not pleasant. But then everywhere you go, they treat other people with the utmost respect and the, the, the kindest, um, gentlest um, tone of voice. It's like, hey, why why you don't talk to me in that tone of voice? Like, what did I do in this relationship to cause you to have such um, a harsh tone of voice towards me? And why everything you do, you know, it's all like, um, let's see what I'm trying to say. It's like you're doing different things because you feel like it's a requirement versus you doing the things because you want to. You know what I mean? Like when somebody want to do something for you, you can tell it in their action. You feel the 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 joy and the um you feel the joy and the pleasantness in the action that they actually um, did. So, yeah, with that being said, um, we just got to learn how to treat each other how we want to be treated. You can't um, have a relationship where one person is going out their way. They're doing everything um, lovingly. They're very affectionate. They want to hug and kiss. And then you're spouse over there I'm not that type of person I, I mean that's just not who I am that that won't work I mean like it's a give and take when it's a relationship yeah even if you're not affectionate even if you're not that type of person I mean you knew how your spouse was before you actually got with them so you you gotta you gotta you gotta balance that even if you don't want to hold hands hold hands for at least however long you feel it in your heart just to keep confusion out. If you don't like to kiss, kiss anyway just to make your other significant other spouse feel loved. I mean, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> Boy, listen, my podcast going to have so many um, episodes because it's just so many things. When it comes to relationships and life, man... <laughs> It's never ending. All right, so we're going to skip around. We're not going to hit all 14 because I don't have time. Okay, it says reflect on what you love and appreciate in your partner. That's a a, a good um, trait to focus on. Um, that is a good tip. Uh, what qualities about your spouse do you admire or feel amused by? If you like that they're adventurous, keep sharing new activities, Dr. Saruto suggests. If you enjoy their playfulness in your communication, encourage bantering and the sharing of new ideas. 
If you value that they're warm and affectionate, make sure to connect with them each each day rather than getting caught up in other quality quota DN things. Your husband or wife will appreciate your interest in doing things with them that you know they enjoy and it's likely they'll do the same right back for you. Well, I don't know. You know, that that is a true and factual um, statement or should I say tip. Um, But everybody is not the same, man. You can show interest in some people, man. Everything you do is all about them and their ambition and their adventures and what they want to eat and where they want to go. And I mean, it, it's sometimes it's a one way street. So when when you read stuff like this, I mean, you obviously got to understand these types of uh, tips does not apply to every situation. I mean, it should apply to every situation, but everybody is not the same. So where I may um, give in and and appease to all of your adventurous uh, ideas, you may be the self-centered, selfish person who can care less about mine. So to stay on a positive note, um, yeah, this statement, this tip, is very, very beneficial to rekindling your relationship. If you want to make it work, you'll do whatever it takes. And I, I'm going to move on. Um, nurture yourself. Marriage is about giving, but make sure you find time for yourself too. I like that. To have a good marriage, you need to be a good you. Bowman says, Learn how to prioritize and put boundaries around activities that keep you healthy and whole. Activities like rest, relaxation, fitness, and time with friends. In other words, remember that scheduling me time into your day is not selfish. It's a necessity. It will strengthen your relationship Because you'll have a saner version of you to bring to the us equation. And yeah, we all do have to have time to self-nurture, to, you know, gather thoughts and woosah sometimes. And it's good to be able to laugh and talk with opposite sex of your mate. So if I'm a female, I would like to have female conversations with my home girls. You know what I'm saying? Family members, friends, somebody I trust. Vice versa, a man, he want to have that um, one-on-one time with his uh, male friends who he can woosa. And if he drink, he like to drink and, and chill with his homeboys. So, I mean, if you're in a healthy relationship and everything is going accordingly how it should, um, and when I say that, meaning um, there's no deception, infidelity, there's trust and honesty in the relationship, then by all means, I totally 100% agree with with that. You got to keep yourself healthy, keep yourself feeling good, looking good. Because if something, Lord, you know, for sake, if something happens with you and your spouse, you would hate to know that you wasted all that time and energy into that person only to find out you let yourself go. So, yeah, I agree with that. Define your problems. Okay, let's see what time it is. Make sure I'm not going over my break. I am at work. All right, define your problems. Spend some time looking at your relationship and figure out which parts work and which parts don't. Bowman suggests that you take a moment to imagine a perfect day in your perfect relationship. 
what would this look like? How would you and your partner interact? Then create a plan of how you might get from point A, your current reality, to point B, that perfect day. Write it down if you need to. Then start breaking the issues into bite-sized pieces and tackling them one at a time. Um, I 100% agree. You got to define the problems in your relationship because at the end of the day, if everybody sit around um, and hold in how they really feel instead of expressing how they feel, then I can assure you, you will not get to the uh, meat of the problem. So if I sit around and I'm like, oh, I just can't stand this about him. I can't stand this about her. And then never, you know, get to the point where, you know, you're not going to like everything about a person, no matter who it is, whether it's family member, friends, relationship. But at the end of the day, you're going to be like, okay, in this marriage, in this relationship, in order for us to go further and to have an enjoyable relationship, I need to address some things that really do bother me and vice versa. The the opposite, the, the significant other should do the same. That way, you know, you don't have all this stuff just building up, building up, building, and then, psh, you know, you explode. <laughs> That's never good. Never, ever good. Because usually when a person explodes, it end up in a relationship being severed. Everybody going their own way, so... Make a financial plan together. Just speaking on that real quick because my time is almost up. Um, yeah, you should definitely make a financial plan. You can't have one person who is a spender. They spend, 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 never budgeting and blowing all the money. And then you are over here on the other hand. You're trying to save, 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 save for rainy days or just to be a a, a, a person who... Um, don't just blow money. If you're a person who is, who is very fugal with money, then you don't want to just blow money. Every penny you get, you're trying to find something to do with the money. That's not good. And in today's time with the 2021, 2020, 2021 years, I really think that everybody should focus on um, saving um, putting back as much money as they can. Me personally, pay bills and anything extra, put it up. Now, I'm not telling you not to enjoy your life because you need to take time out to enjoy your life, especially in a relationship. You should plan things that you and your spouse can do together. But what I'm saying is every penny you get should not go towards going out blowing your money i mean pay bills save so i don't know let's see all right take your fighting gloves off don't duke it out. Instead, consider talking, t- excuse me, taking a time out. There's a concept called loss aversion in economics or economics, however you pronounce it, which simply means we really hate to lose. And when we think we are losing, we fight like there's no tomorrow to try to win. It happens when couples talk about hot button issues like sex, housework, money, or the kids. If either person thinks he or she is losing, he or she will ratchet up the states and escalate the issue, she continues. 
The next time you see a spousal spat going to a not so happy place, take a breath, take a break, and revisit the subject when neither one of you feels overwhelmed by the topic. And just from experience, I can honestly say that sex in a marriage is very important. Um, that's a topic that a lot of married people don't like to talk about, but it is very relevant. And I feel that if there's an area, um, in your life, sex, um, money, uh, communication, trust, anything like that, um, it really do need to be discussed. And yeah, some people... They take it like, even with housework, you notice things that need to be done, but the other person is not doing it. And then when you speak on it, they get, you know, aggressive and hostile because they think you're trying to boss them around. But in reality, it's like, okay, um, can you please take out the trash? I mean, that's something that I shouldn't have to say no way. But hey, like the saying goes, just do it. But um, my time is up, y'all. I do hate to end this um, like this. I may come in and add more um, as the day go by. But if I don't add anything to this, um, what I will say from experience, I've been in a bad place in my relationship before. And my goal was me personally try to do things to make that person feel good about themselves encourage them um even if they are in a low place i try to help you know push them to believe in themselves and and try to support them financially um until they get back on their feet and if we are having trust issues you know try to find ways to build a trust without forcing it on someone and then household chores i try to help out do what i can do my part Sexually, I mean, that's just a topic all by itself. That's something I would have to do a whole nother podcast episode on. So I'm just going to not touch on that. But treat people how you want to be treated. I personally feel that if I'm not yelling and screaming at you and my tone of voice is pleasant, then I feel like and, and I should be able to get the same treatment. And never, ever treat other people, other females, other men better than you treat your own husband or wife. That never would go over good. So with all that being said, treat people how you want to be treated. Do your part. Make sure you stay healthy. Make sure you take care of yourself. Learn to love yourself because you can't love no one else if you don't know how to love yourself. So that is the end of this podcast on this wonderful Thursday. Um, I pray that everyone stay safe and stay prayed up. Until next time, this is your girl Priscilla checking out of Giving You the Business. Have a wonderful day.